Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, uh, we are here with Regional Health Officer, Dr. Jennifer Vines, Dan Hall, a paramedic with American Medical Response in Clackamas County, Multnomah County Sheriff Mike Grease, who is also the current president of the Oregon-Idaho High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, Sergeant Danny DePietro with the Washington County Sheriff's Office, Beaverton School District Superintendent Don Grotting, and finally, Kelsey Jung, Harm Reduction Program Manager for Multnomah County. Listening in, we also have Sergeant Eric Strohmeyer with the Narcotics and Organized Crime Unit at Portland Police Bureau, and also Dr. Sarah Present, Clackamas County Health Officer. So a whole group of experts here to talk to you today. Um, our speakers are gonna start by saying just a few words and then we will um, open it up for your questions. Um, and I will um, ask Dr. Vines if you wouldn't mind. Great. Thank you, Kate, and welcome everyone. I am Dr. Jennifer Vines, public health physician, and speaking to you today as the lead health officer for our three county metro area, Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington counties. Thank you for being here to help us get this important message out. It is an understatement to say that it has been and continues to be a difficult time because of COVID-19. My regional colleagues and I are here today with a life safety message that reflects the risks of opiate overdose that have not just persisted during the pandemic, but worsened because of the special dangers of synthetic opioids, the most common being fentanyl. Fentanyl is a man-made version of the painkiller morphine, only much stronger. An amount roughly equivalent to a few grains of salt can be deadly. Too much fentanyl makes your body so relaxed that you forget to breathe, and there is very little room for error. Unfortunately, you will hear today that our region appears to be awash in cheap, fake pills that look like they came from a pharmacy, but are in fact knockoffs with many containing unpredictable amounts of fentanyl. We are seeing an increase in fatal drug overdoses across the metro region mirroring national trends. and We believe counterfeit opioid pills containing fentanyl are driving this trend. Talking about drug overdose may conjure a certain image or type of person, but we wanna be really clear that people who use these pills may have little experience with illicit drug use. We are placing a special emphasis today on youth who may be more likely to take these pills because they are cheap, often available online, and don't carry the same stigma as say smoking methamphetamine or injecting heroin. Substance misuse is a multifaceted issue and our speakers today reflect that we are unified in our message. Anyone who gets pills from anywhere other than a pharmacy should assume that they are counterfeit and contain deadly amounts of fentanyl. We are asking medical and social service providers to highlight these risks, especially if they work with youth or people they know occasionally use pills they get from friends or any source other than a pharmacy. And finally, we're asking anyone who uses drugs or knows someone who does to carry multiple doses of naloxone, the life-saving antidote to opiate overdose. With that, I'm gonna turn the virtual microphone over to Dan Hall from Clackamas, excuse me, from Clackamas County. Thank you, Dr. Vines. Uh, Dan Hall here, American Medical Response Paramedic in Clackamas County. Uh, in my 23 years uh, of service at American Medical Response in the metro area, um, Overdoses have been uh, a regular part of our job. However, I will say that in the last year or so, we've seen a huge uptick um, in narcotics overdoses and specifically um, pills that look like oxycodone. The general consensus or the general uh, story out there is that uh, I, took, I took an oxycodone that I got from a friend of mine and I had an overdose. Um, a lot of, and it goes through um, all different age groups, um, all different socioeconomic levels. It's uh, widespread and we're seeing more and more of it all the time. And that's, you know, generally that's my, that's my message. That's what we're seeing out there. Um, we are also seeing uh, more Narcan kits. Little by little, we're getting um, that Narcan was given uh, by a bystander before EMS arrived. We're also seeing it with law enforcement that they're, if they get there before uh, EMS agencies or fire, 
that they're able to give Narcan. So that is helping, but we're kind of feeling like it's a drop in the bucket. Um, but, and we're all doing, doing the best we can and trying to, to get the word out um, that these, these pills are, are dangerous. And if you're not uh, getting it from your doctor, then you have a high chance of overdosing and potentially dying from taking even just one of those pills. And with that, I'll hand it off to Mike Reese. Good afternoon. I'm Multnomah County Sheriff Mike Reese, and I'm also the chair of the board of the Oregon-Idaho High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program. The Oregon-Idaho HIDA is part of a federal effort to fund regional initiatives to reduce the harm uh, and impact of dangerous drugs to our community. As part of our collaborative, we have state, local, and federal representatives from law enforcement agencies partnered with prevention and treatment folks as well. We believe in working together to connect people with substance use disorders to health resources while disrupting and dismantling the drug trafficking crime organizations that profit from the pain and suffering of others. The illegal importation or diversion of fentanyl is a growing threat to our region. In 2015, our law enforcement partners didn't seize any fentanyl pills. However, last year, we seized over 733,000 pills just in Oregon. Fentanyl is often laced into other drugs such as heroin and is frequently found in fake oxycodone 30 milligram pills that are sold on the street for as little as 10 to $15. It's incredibly potent and dangerous. At the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, we are committed to doing everything possible to reduce the harm from opioids in our community. Our deputies carry the life-saving drug naloxone in case they're sent to an overdose in our community. And we provide it to adults being released from our custody who may be at an increased risk for an overdose after a period of incarceration. I'd like to turn it over to our law enforcement partners at the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, my name is Sergeant Danny DePietro and I'm here to speak directly about our Westside Interagency Narcotic Team or WIND for short. It's an interagency team that's comprised of Hillsborough Police, Beaverton Police, the Oregon National Guard Counter Drug Program and also the FBI. This year, we have seen a drastic increase in overdose deaths that have been investigated by our WIND team. Primarily, most investigations that our WIND team is currently investigating are directly related to an overdose death. This year alone, the WIN team has investigated 14 overdose deaths, and 10 of those are suspected to be caused by a counterfeit prescription drug containing fentanyl. In the same time frame of 2020, we had investigated three. In 2019, in that same time frame, we had only investigated one. Currently this year, our investigators have seized over 17,000 pills. Last year alone, they seized 14, so we have surpassed that already only a third of the way through the year. We want to encourage everybody who is, um, excuse me, we want to encourage everybody who is using these drugs to assume that they are or they do contain fentanyl and could have a deadly, uh, deadly dose of fentanyl within them. So please, if you have not been prescribed this pill by a licensed physician or you have not received it from a pharmacy, assume that it is a counterfeit drug. So please, like I said, please be safe. Um, I would like to pass it off to Don Grotting, the Beaverton School District Superintendent. Thank you, Danny. Um, Don Grotting, uh, Superintendent of Beaverton School District. First, I just wanna thank you all for inviting me to participate here today. And I'm just here to reiterate the point that fentanyl crisis is real and it's particularly impacting our middle school, high school and college age students right here in our community. In the past 18 months, we in the Beaverton School District have lost several students, teenagers who had hopes and dreams and plans. These teenagers had families who loved them and are still coming to grips with their losses. Uh, parents may be thinking to themselves that my child isn't caught up in this drug culture or my child wouldn't even know where to get something like this. Uh, I asked, does your child have a cell phone? Is your child on social media platforms like Snapchat? 
you know, if the answer is yes, they likely do know about the teen drug culture and do have easy access, much like the vaping epidemic that we experienced back in 2018 and 19. And uh, parents are often the last to know. During the last week of April, the Beaverton School District will be sponsoring a fentanyl awareness campaign entitled Fake and Fatal, One Pill Can Kill. You'll see social media posts on our districts and school social media accounts. We'll be promoting resources on our district website. Our students will be getting information in their health classes. Our administrators will be receiving specific fentanyl training and we'll be hosting a virtual community conversation about fentanyl on Thursday, April 29th at 7 p.m. You can participate by watching live on the district's YouTube channel or Facebook page. Our panelists will include representatives from the Washington County Public Health Department, Washington County Sheriff's Department and the Beaverton Police Department. And during that conversation, you'll also be hearing from former Sunset High School parents who recently lost their son to fentanyl poisoning in December. These parents have shown tremendous courage and willingness to share their story as they do not want some other parent to endure what they've had to go through. Finally, I implore all parents to get educated on this topic and sit down and talk with their children. It uh, very well could be a conversation that saves their lives. Uh, this is truly an epidemic and we need to get ahead of it. Uh, and it's uh, my pleasure to turn it over to uh, Kelsey Jung, I believe with Multnomah County. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kelsey Young. I work with Multnomah County Health Department Harm Reduction Program. So we operate the syringe services and naloxone distribution in Multnomah County. Um, and I just wanna speak on some of the risk reduction strategies for people who do decide to use these pills. Um, first off, we have been in conversation with our syringe service participants over the recent months and resoundingly, our participants are sharing that they are aware of these counterfeit or fake pills that are on the streets, and they are calling them fentanyl pills, even if they are being sold as oxy 30 milligram pills. And so no matter how real they look, it is safer to assume that a pill that you get off the street or purchase online is fake. We know that some people will still want to use these pills, and so there are four steps that can help reduce your risk if you do decide to use these pills. First, you wanna test the pills or any substance you're using with a fentanyl test strip. Then you will wanna start by using a small amount and you don't wanna be using these pills when you are alone. You want to also have naloxone or Narcan with you. And the only way that's helpful is if someone is there to administer it to you if you do fall into an overdose. So for people who are using any kind of substances, syringe exchanges will often have fentanyl test strips that we distribute for free. And we also distribute naloxone to people who are using drugs. Test strips can also be purchased online and they're about a dollar per strip, sometimes cheaper if you buy them in bulk. Um, I have one with me. They come in packages that look like this. When you open up the package, you will see a small strip like this. You will dip one end of this strip into the uh, liquid that has the substance crushed inside of it. Best practice would be to crush an entire pill or at least a portion of it, dilute it in some water and dip the strip in here. After you leave that in the water for 15 seconds, if you remove it and only one line shows up, It'll be a pink or red line close to the blue area. That means the sample that you tested does have fentanyl in it. And that's a red flag for you to go a little bit slower. Even if the test strip does not have a positive result, remember that a tiny amount of fentanyl can be fatal and proceed with caution still because something could have gone wrong, still assume there could be fentanyl inside. 
Um, when you're starting with a small dose, again, remember it takes a tiny amount of fentanyl to cause overdose, like a few grains of sand. Um, and this is happening even in people who already have an opioid tolerance. We are hearing reports at our syringe service sites for people who are IV heroin users that have fallen into overdose just by smoking one of these pills. So for people who have been historically IV users that may think smoking a substance or swallowing a substance reduces their risk, be aware that some of these pills that are on the street are so potent that it can still cause overdose just by smoking or swallowing it. And you wanna be careful not to be using these pills if you're using any other substances that are what we call downers. So like alcohol, those things can both suppress your central nervous system and slow your breathing. So mixing those substances increases your risk. And when we say try not to use when you're alone, what we want is for you to let someone know where you are and what you are taking. That's so that someone can look out for the signs of an overdose and help administer naloxone if you do show those signs. During an overdose, somebody's body becomes too relaxed to remember to breathe. So people start going limp, they turn pale or blue, especially in the lips or fingertips, and their breathing will slow down and eventually stop. As soon as a person stops responding, you need to call 911 and administer naloxone. Oregon's Good Samaritan law does protect the person who administered the naloxone, as well as the person who overdosed, from prosecution for drug possession or paraphernalia. So don't let fear of arrest be a deterrent to calling 911 and getting emergency medical services there. We would love for every adult to carry naloxone, but we understand that it can be difficult to get. Most pharmacies carry it and you do not need a prescription. The pharmacist can authorize the prescription for you. Um, most health insurances pay for it. Some people may need to pay out of pocket if they themselves are not at risk of overdose. But for anyone who does use drugs, you can talk to a doctor or a pharmacist directly and they can authorize a prescription for nasal Narcan. And Oregon Health Plan covers this. There's no limit on the number of Narcan that you can get. And also for people who are using drugs, they can talk to someone at their local harm reduction or syringe service program and we distribute naloxone for free. We distribute the injectable naloxone at our syringe service sites, as well as fentanyl test strips. Thank you. Thank you all um, for, for sharing. Um, and I think um, at this point, um, we can take questions from reporters. It might be helpful um, reporters who are joining us through the Zoom app, if you wouldn't mind chatting your name and outlet, and I can call on you that way. Otherwise, if you're joining by phone, you can you should have the power to unmute yourselves and just ask your questions. And also a reminder, if anybody is having trouble or um, needs a copy of this, I'll be posting a video on YouTube shortly after the briefing at, at youtube.com uh, backslash Multco presents. With that, um, let me know if anybody um, has any questions for these panelists? John Hendricks with KPTV. Um, I was curious about where are these pills um, coming from? Are they being like manufactured here in the state? Like um, it seems like a steep increase. I'm kind of curious about like the origins of, of the problem. I could uh, try to answer that one. Um, what we're finding in most of our investigations that we're seeing both, some of them are manufactured outside the US, but we're also seeing evidence that the actual pills are manufactured and pressed here within our local area. Um, so they come from all different locations, um, but the uh, biggest problem is obviously is when we're seeing these, these pills manufactured here, it's not illegal to possess a pill press, and that's what they're using to make these fraudulent or counterfeit pills. Did we do such a good job of answering all the questions up front? Carmen Montes with Univision. 
Hi there. Um, my question is, do you guys know if any of these, um, I guess, narcotics, the fentanyl is coming in from a specific uh, Mexican cartel or from a specific cartel um, that's also kind of linked to some of the violence that's being seen in the area? I'll try and answer that, Carmen. That's a great question. Most of the illegal drugs that are coming into our community are brought by poly drug organizations. And these are international crime syndicates, many of them based in Mexico that are bringing in heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, and fentanyl into our community and causing terrific harm to our um, community members. Uh, in terms of drug violence, we don't see a lot of that here between the cartels. Uh, occasionally we do have crimes committed that we suspect are cartel violence, but most of those occur south of our border. Thank you. I have an additional question um, for um, Kelsey. Can um, anybody have access to Narcan? I mean, how accessible is this for families that you know, may suspect uh, their child using any type of these drugs? So we have incredible laws in Oregon to access Narcan through pharmacies. Um, as I mentioned before, it can be somewhat cost prohibitive for people who don't have health insurance or if their health insurance is not able to cover Narcan itself. Um, when you go to a pharmacy, most likely you would get a dose of this nasal name brand Narcan. Um, and it comes, it comes in a box and inside a box is two doses. Um, the over-the-counter price of this out of pocket can be around $150. And that's why we have done a lot of work to expand health insurance coverage of this medication. Um, and so if you are a family that has someone who may be at risk of overdose, I strongly encourage you to talk to a medical provider that uh, can authorize the prescription and hopefully have it covered by health insurance. Um, and as I mentioned before, we serve adults, people over 18 at our syringe service programs and we distribute the free injectable naloxone to anyone who's using drugs of any kind at our syringe service programs. Thank you. Well, great. Um, any last takers before I let um, let these good people go back to their jobs? Yeah, KPTV. Um, was curious if there are any numbers as far as the number of cases, like percentage rise um, in overdose cases. I know we talked about the deaths um, earlier, but um, is that a number that is easy to get? Yes, yeah, so this is Jennifer Vines responding. I can share our public facing opiate dashboard. Really briefly, what you'll see for the region uh, are several imperfect measures of, to speak to your question. One is uh, emergency response to opiate overdose. A lot of overdoses uh, are actually handled uh, privately, so um, they, they may not all involve an EMS response, uh, but we do have uh, regional data uh, showing those and uh, actually a recent all-time high uh, just within the last couple of weeks uh, regionally for those calls. Uh, the second thing we have for the three counties is a measure of emergency department and urgent care visits that are related to overdose. Again, also an, an, an imperfect metric, hard to, hard to capture all of those. Um, we did get into warning level uh, numbers of visits in first quarter 2021. Um, the third piece we have comes from the Multnomah County Medical Examiner data, uh, which uh, tends to lag because of the time it takes to get toxicology results back. But for 2020, fentanyl specific fatal overdoses more than doubled in Multnomah County. And that mirrors a national trend that has a, just a similar takeoff of fentanyl related opiate overdose deaths. So I'll share that uh, dashboard in the chat. Thank you. Great, thank you all for joining us. Um, Carmen, did you wanna follow with one more? Yes, sorry, I have a, a couple more. I'm just wondering in regards to the um, 
uh, angle with the, the young kids consuming these drugs, what is there a re specific reason why they're doing it? Is it due to depression or anything to do with COVID um, in the last year? Don, what are you hearing from? from um, thank you. Uh, I, we're just a multitude of things. I, I think um, kids and just the idea of experimenting new drugs, whether it's vaping, uh, I do think maybe some self-medication regarding some of the social emotional stress that uh, students are under. And I think uh, that is playing a part, but we don't have any definite data as to um, why this is why this is occurring? Why why it is really starting to escalate out of control? Um, the only thing I would say, and I know that uh, uh, police officers can kind of talk to this, and and Doctor Doctor Vines, it's it's just so readily available. My goodness, how easy it is to access for anybody to access these uh, illegal drugs is it's it's. Uh, it's mind blowing uh, how easy it is. You can just go on there and in five to 10 minutes, you can you can be getting things getting delivered to you. So it's, re it's just readily available. Yeah, Carmen, this is Jennifer Vines responding. I, I completely agree. I think, you know, people are in distress. Um, we were hearing about an increase in alcohol use because of the pandemic. And I think our superintendent is spot on. Um, my understanding from law enforcement is that uh, these pills now are very cheap and very easy to come by. Um, and young people we know will experiment. Um, so I think we can't say for sure what the answer is to your question, but I think those, those elements are probably all in play. And a follow-up question is, um, is this only being seen in the Beaverton School District or is this also being seen among other school districts in the area? Uh, no, and when I'm talking with all of my colleagues, and it, and it, uh, you know, I mainly in the metro, but I have been in contact with some of my peers in rural Oregon, um, and it's across all economic classes, all races. It's, uh, it's, it's everywhere, and it's just, just as is. I think I referred to vaping. Vaping just doesn't take place in urban settings. It's in rural settings. It's everywhere. And I think this fentanyl epidemic is spreading its way throughout Oregon and throughout the, throughout our nation. And Carmen, I wanna just add on one thing to the first question you had asked. Um, when it comes to children getting these, these, these counterfeit pills, it's not like they're getting it from a drug dealer that maybe we have pictured in the past that's standing on the street corner. A lot of the times the individuals who are using these pills, they're getting them from entrusted friends or somebody who's a friend of a friend. So they feel that it's safe. There's that level of comfort. So that's why we're trying to encourage everybody that no matter who this pill that you receive, where it comes from, uh, just assume that it is going to have a, a deadly dose of fentanyl within it. Thank you. And again, thank you everybody for joining. Um, I will um, uh, post a, a copy of this video on YouTube um, after, after this event. And um, thanks, thanks again uh, to everybody. All right, take care, be well.